We've arrived at Benga Lagoon in Fiji. I'm sitting here with Mark Mountain, my cameraman, and we've been busy preparing underwater camera housings for our special film on bull sharks. Bull sharks? I thought we were here to film the octopus. No, we're here to film bull sharks. Oh, great, now you tell me. Anyway, one thing about Mark Mountain is he's been with me on many expeditions filming our Wildlife Man series. He always remains calm in dangerous situations. Calm? I'm not real calm at the moment. I'm in a mild state of panic. We're off to a good start, aren't we? For thousands of years, some Fijian tribes worshipped Dakawanga, a powerful sea god that can change into the form of a massive shark. Arguably, the most dangerous shark species on the planet is the bull shark. And here in Benga Lagoon, the men that believe they're protected by Dakawanga hand feed bull sharks without the protection of cages. One of the sharks that frequents Benga Lagoon is possibly the largest bull shark to ever be hand fed by man. Some locals call this monster shark Big Mama. Others believe she may even be Dakawanga the sea god. The reason I'm sitting here colouring in this white underwater housing with a black texture colour is because years ago I was filming sharks and I wore a pair of white fins. When I kicked up off the seabed to come up, a shark came up underneath me, grabbed hold of the flipper and tore it clean off my foot. It frightened the hell out of me. So I learnt a very valuable lesson. When you feed sharks, you get chunks of white flesh floating around in the sea, and they will attack those white pieces of fish. So what we do, we colour in anything white with a black texture colour. We've even got little white panels on our wetsuit. We'll get rid of that too, because I don't want any bull sharks making a mistake and coming up and snapping onto my cameraman, Mark Mountain's camera, and frightening the hell out of him. We join the shark men. These tough and highly experienced men will hand feed the bull sharks for our cameras. Hey, bulla! <laughs> I meet with Papa, the shark feeder, and discuss the bull shark feeding. Now we will be going down 30 metres yes. and yeah. we'll see bull sharks. Yes. How big? The biggest, like bull, Big Mama, is about four meters. Four meters? Yes. That is huge. Mm -hmm. How many bull sharks could we get? In this time of the year, because most of the bull sharks are coming back from mating, yes. roughly like 30 to 35 bull sharks. 35 mm -hmm. bull sharks? 35 bull sharks. Oh, mm -hmm. OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a big day. Yeah. Tell me how it works. You've got some wall there. Oh yeah, we build some walls. Yes. It's a dead coral. Yes. We build it together about yep. that high, so people can be behind the wall. So the guest divers are behind the, the wall. The guests and everyone will be behind the wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. And where will you be? Over the wall. Ah, <laughs> out the front. <laughs> Up in the front, yes. Now I can see you've got these garbage bins. Do you yeah. actually send the garbage bin down on the dive? The dark, yeah, down there over the wall. How many kilos of bait? Uh, in this garbage bin, uh, we have about 150 kilos. 150, 150 kilograms. Kilo. That's a lot of bait. Do the sharks try and get in? They try. Oh, yeah, they will. They try and they get in? Get in and get the food from inside the garbage Do bin. Do they really? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to get out there with you, yes. beside you, mm -hmm. filming the action. Okay. Have I got a problem with that? Um, because I will be responsible of the feeding of this animal. Yeah. So we will provide one person, one staff, to look after you. Yeah. yeah. The only problem we think is the sharks will be uh, looking at your camera. Yes. They might think you have a nice piece of fish. Oh. Uh -huh. so, so the that... staff can be looking after the, both sides of your body. And looking after my the, back. And your back, yes. Uh, this is some of the, uh, the food we're going to feed with sharks today. This is all the crap from Fiji fish. 
And down here we have some nice piece of our tuna head. Uh, it's really smelly, but uh, it's a chum chum. They really love this. Okay. So it's all a um, mix of all type of fish, like mai mai, we have tuna, sunfish, and, um, and marlin. So they're all in here. Mmm, beautiful. The Adventure Diver's Boat takes us to Shark Reef. My goal is to film the reaction of the sharks towards me and record their feeding habits. And hopefully film an encounter with the legend shark they call Big Mama. We anchor on the reef flat. The reef drops to 100 feet or 30 meters to the sea floor. The man-made wall is where Mark Mountain will position himself to film me. Over the wall, the bait bin and the shark feeder are located. And beside the feeder, I am positioned. 24 meters or 80 feet away, the seabed drops to over 260 metres into the Benga Lagoon Passage. The sharks come up from the depths to feed. The top of the reef is dominated by white and black tip sharks. Wisely, they do not hunt deeper down where the far more powerful bull sharks patrol the feeding zone. Bull sharks dwarf the reef sharks and will readily prey upon them. As I descend deeper, I swim through soft coral fans, waving gently in the current. A proud lionfish has no fear from shark attack. All sharks know his feather-like fins sheath deadly venomous spines. But his existence may require the shark's continued influence in the ecosystem here. an emperor angelfish hovers close to the safety of a coral crevice. He is magnificent, painted by nature's brush in yellow stripes. I stop for a moment and film two identical blennies. They perform a strange tail dance for my camera. At 30 metres, I settle down in the competition zone, close to the shark feeder and the bait bin. A sinister cloud of blood spreads and within seconds it attracts three metre long tawny sharks. These bottom dwelling sharks have narrow jaws designed for crushing octopus and crayfish. Determined tawny sharks push their alien-like heads into the bin and steal a free feed. Giant trevally and red bass circle above like vultures. They snap at floating scraps left by the sharks. But their presence is a major concern to me. 
it is almost impossible to see through the hungry fish and film the patrolling bull sharks. Some of the dominant adult sharks come in, not to feed, but to inspect me. Their eyesight is far more efficient than mine. Like cats, these sharks have layers of shiny plates behind their retina that greatly assist low light vision. I am face to face with highly developed predators. The results of over 400 million years of evolution. But strangely, only the tawny sharks are taking the baits. With the bin now empty, we will have to surface and get more bait. Now those tawny sharks were quite amazing, the way they put their heads in the garbage bin trying to get to the bait. But we didn't see many bull sharks, maybe four or five. Visibility was not that good, so it was hard to see them. They looked very big and, and somewhat menacing, but they never came in and actually fed. So hopefully this afternoon we'll have more luck. Mark Mountain takes his camera for the next dive. He will once again position himself behind the wall and film me as I record the sharks in the competition zone near the feeder. When I arrive on the seabed, I notice movement in the coral rubble. A deadly spined scorpion fish is waiting to ambush passing fish. He is the master of disguise and almost impossible to see. I'm happy I did not kneel on his painful spines. But I have no time now to look down. Dominant bull sharks are displeased at my closeness to the bait. But again, the swarm of trevally and bass cloud my vision. White pointers are feared by most people, but bull sharks probably are responsible for more fatal attacks mostly because they breed and can survive in freshwater rivers and lakes and have a far greater distribution than white sharks. The feeding begins and I manage to film the crushing jaws of bull sharks in action. Bull sharks have a never ending supply of teeth. As teeth are broken, rows of new teeth roll forward to replace them. Serrated, razor-sharp teeth are supported by powerfully muscled jaws that allow the bull shark to tear through flesh and bone of both fish and mammal like butter. Offered bait is ignored and another challenge is mounted. I bump the shark's nose gently. These sharks are highly territorial near food. Possibly many attacks on humans are stimulated by territorial ownership and not hunger.
a chunk of bait has floated to the seabed. Trevally and tawny sharks churn up a sandstorm as they compete for a meal. My vision is blinded by suspended particles. I'm glad the last of the bait is consumed and we can now return to the surface. Taking some ponies for a swim is a great way to end an exciting day. But I wonder if we will get the chance to film the legend shark the locals call Big Mama. We begin our day granting a request from a local village school. Whenever I can, I love educating children about the plight wild animals face surviving in the modern world. When fishermen put long lines on the sand with lots and lots of hooks for fish, sometimes the sharks get hooked and they get those hooks in their mouth. And the shark is strong and he might break the line but the hook is stainless steel, it doesn't rust, and it stays in the poor shark's mouth. After a while, his mouth gets really sore, and infection gets in there. And after a bit longer, he can't eat. And if he can't eat, the poor shark dies. So what we did in Australia is we dived down on scuba with a rope. And we went down 30 metres, we went down on scuba with a long rope with a big loop, a lasso. And we put it in front of the shark and the shark swims into the loop and we pull it tight. We start wrestling that shark and we pull and pull on the rope and the shark goes crazy and starts snapping because he's really angry. And we pull and pull and pull, and eventually we got the shark into the boat. And when we pull him into the boat, we jump on top of the shark. And with a pair of pliers, we took out those terrible hooks out of the poor shark's mouth. Cut them, took the hooks out. Then we pushed the shark back in the water. When the bull shark swims into the river and the water's really dirty, then it's not a good place to swim. Because if you're swimming in dirty water and the bull shark is there, then he can't see you. He doesn't know what you are. He thinks maybe you're a pelican or bird or sick fish or dog. Comes up, whack. Very dangerous, the bull shark in the river. If the water is very clear, not a problem, because then they can see. But if the water is very dirty, not a good place to swim in the big river. Mark and I are invited to join a festival of colour celebration with some of the local Hindus. A ceremony to forget past problems and celebrate the future. This song is uh, dedicated uh, to one life for men.
For thousands of years, the tribes of Benga Island have worshipped different gods. Some gods protect the men from fire. And other gods, like the great sea god Dakawanga, protect the men from sharks. The shark men from adventure divers come from Benga Island. And because of their fears for our safety, Mark and I have been invited by the chief to pay homage to the sea god Dakawanga and hopefully gain his protection from shark attack. The chief said, uh, when, uh, when uh, human, I mean the people from my village, wants to uh, have a, a contact with uh, the sea god, we have to mix a kava in the bowl. Yeah. And then the chief has to drink the first bowl, yeah. and then the leftover in the, in the bowl, we have to throw it into the ocean. And then the sea god will suddenly come forward to the village and and uh, protect the protect people. the people and protect the island. Wow. I think it is because uh, we work with sharks. I think it's a good idea if we share a cover bowl with the chief. Not one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. No. I would be very honored to share kava with the chief. <laughs> 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 I might be protected from the shark, but yes, now I can't yeah. speak to my wife. <laughs> so this is what they use. Yeah. This is what they use. Mix a cover and then uh, say a few words and let the chief drink and the yes. rest they may tip it over into the ocean. Okay. Okay. The, to call the power. Uh, to call the power of the, the power of um, the sea god. Yeah. And then um, and then these two will walk together. Wherever the people of this village, they swim in the ocean, where, anywhere, they will never be attacked by shark. Right. They will never be attacked by shark. Wonderful. Hello, Mambo. Clap your hand. Take that bowl. Take that bowl. Okay. I think the whole lot. Both hands, yes. Mm. Vinaka! Vinaka! Pull of Vinaka! Pull of Vinaka! Back on Adventure Diver's boat, I chat with Iliki about yeah. the legend shark, Big Mama. Tell me what happens when the feeder drags the fish back towards me. What will happen? Okay, the, the, the feeder will drag that towards you and then the shark will open its mouth. Yes. Yeah, very close to you. To my camera. To your camera. Yeah. And then opens the mouth and gets the food right in front of your camera. Wonderful. Yeah. Will you be sitting beside me to protect me from sharks coming from behind? Yes, from your right hand I will be there. Yeah. Right? About two feet away from you. 
to protect the sharks from coming to you? Now, I come from a tribe of people that did not have a shark guy. Uh -huh. So what's the chance of one of these big bull sharks just coming up and biting off my head? Yeah, they like you. They like yeah, me. Yeah, they can sniff you and know, <laughs> I, I like this one. <laughs> what happens if one of the sharks bites you? Will it come then onto me? Uh, no, if it bites me, then it'll spare you. Ah, okay. If it passes me, then it'll bite you. It'll bite me. It bites you. Okay. So one of us is going to get it. Oh, mm. great. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not me, because I'm protected from oh, the sharks. Oh, okay, fantastic. <laughs> That's why I'm standing right beside you, so yeah. that I am protecting you. You're protecting me. Yeah. Well, I've got news for you. I went and met your chief. Oh, yeah? And I had Carver with your chief. Oh. So now I also am protected. Oh, from that's good news. So now we are brothers. Yes, thank you. You're welcome into the tribe. Thank you. <laughs> Before our next dive, I brief Mark on how to best film me with the feeding bull sharks. Stay a little bit high and see if you can track that whole scene. So as Papa drags the boat across, you're filming that, track, follow the shark until it's onto me and you get the establishing scene as I'm getting these awesome nice shots. What about the tawny sharks around your feet? You know, there's so many bull sharks, we just got to watch them. I'm not going to look at the tawnies. Like, we haven't any trouble with them, so I'm not going to look at the tawnies. But if a dominant shark comes in, how are you going to fend that off when you've got a shark feeding right in your face? Well, firstly, I won't be looking through the viewfinder, so I'll just be basically dead reckoning, just pointing the camera housing at the feeding shark. And I can keep scanning across for any dominant sharks. If a dominant shark like hook or whatever comes in, then I'll just have to abandon that and bump it off with the camera house. What do you think the chances are of Big Mama turning up? Well, uh, Big Mama is one of our favourite uh, sharks. Uh, you can see Big Mama today and you, we can see her next week sometimes. If she doesn't turn up, but I don't know. One thing for sure, I know Dave, and he won't give up until he films it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With the shark feeder now prepared to drag the baits towards my camera, I hope to gain extreme close up footage of the bull shark's feeding behaviour. And hopefully, Big Mama will attend the feast for our cameras. As we descend, I catch a striped sea snake. Sea snake's venom is far more toxic than the cobra. But its venom is no defense against hungry sharks and giant trevally. I'm amazed this snake has survived its regular trips to the surface to breathe. Back at the feeding bin, the tawny sharks are stealing the bull shark's dinner again. I am puzzled why the bull sharks tolerate the tawny sharks feeding and yet are so passionate about driving me away from the feeding zone. As planned, the feeder begins dragging the baits back towards my camera. I'm now achieving extremely close-up film of the awesome jaws in action. Ah. Ah. 
what's going on down there is crazy. Dave's nearly got his camera right in the shark's mouth. It is easy to see how these sharks can prey upon any large animal they encounter. But surprisingly, they seem to like to smell and touch the baits before committing to a devastating bite. With the baits running out, a pregnant female takes the last chunk of fish. Sadly, a stainless steel hook and trace protrudes from her gills. Over 2,000 sharks are killed for human consumption per hour around our planet. Shark finning being a major contributor to the slaughter. Apex predator bull sharks take over 20 years to reach sexual maturity and like all sharks cannot reproduce as quickly as they are culled by man. The Benga lagoon sharks are protected but when they migrate out to sea they are exposed to shark fishing boats and could be easily wiped out. Well, we haven't had much success finding this really big, dominant female they call Big Mama. Now, some of the local divers have seen her on a shipwreck off the coast. So we're going to go and dive that shipwreck and hopefully we'll find this big shark. Our search for the legend shark must now be intensified. As we descend, I encounter a strange sea star. Like sharks, these animals are also predators. They play an important role with the balance of the reef ecosystem. However, these creatures feed on shellfish. Ghost-like, the shipwreck is now below us. Last week, the legend shark we seek was sighted here. If she is near, the rows of sensory canals on each side of her body will pick up the vibrations of us swimming. Hopefully, she will join us here. The wreck has become a habitat for life. Nature has draped the rusting steel rails and decks in living soft corals of unbelievable beauty. the healthy existence of life on the coral reefs and even here on this wreck is due to the delicate balance between plants and animals competing for space and food. But as man continues to wipe out apex predators like sharks, the balance of the marine ecosystem can be thrown into chaos. The extinction of apex predators 
can affect even the tiniest commensal fish that hide in the soft corals. Tomato clownfish enjoy a safe life. Their immunity to the anemone stings took millions of years of evolution to achieve. Sadly, the legend shark was not encountered on our shipwreck dive. Sharks breed in freshwater rivers. Hungry, territorial, pregnant females can be highly dangerous to swimmers in the murky water. But man's activities are impacting to a far greater extent on the bull shark survival. Oh, it's not easy walking amongst these mangroves in bare feet. But what a fascinating place this is because when the ocean tides come into these jungle creeks these mangroves are flooded and the whole area becomes a perfect environment for bull sharks not only the breeding adults but also the juveniles here amongst the mangrove roots they can find all manner of food different species of fish and also creatures like this an animal that I have to be very careful picking up in those huge nippers. Oh, gotcha. Ah, a nice big juicy mud crab. Now with the incredible senses that the bull sharks possess, when they swim up these muddy creeks, even though they can't see, they can still detect these creatures in the mud and feed on them. So if we destroy the mangrove lined creeks and rivers of places like Fiji, then the very future existence of the bull shark is in doubt. Now I would love to eat this mud crab. Probably let it go. And thank you for not nipping my finger off. There we are. You can sit there for my camera. I meet with Andrew Cummings, the owner of Adventure Divers, and gain some valuable local knowledge. The biggest bull shark that we observe is called Big Mama. Um, she probably comes in at somewhere in between three and a half to four meters in length and weighs eight to nine hundred pounds. Um, she, she's that big of a bull shark that some divers have mistaken her for a tiger shark. We found with these sharks that the most dominant females tended to uh, be very unhappy that I was close to the food. But not the males, it was always the dominant mm -hmm. females. Do you think, are you experiencing the same thing, that when you move away from the bait, that they, they allow you to be there? If, if you put yourself in a position where you are close to the, the, the feeder, or the feeding position, then you've now entered that zone of competition. And these dominant females, they will come and they will bump your camera. They, they, they're letting you know that they're the top dog. They are, they are the big, they're the big guy, and the food is theirs. It's the old bait. <laughs> ah, we're brothers. He's my younger brother. Yeah, bro. yeah, different yeah, younger brother. Younger brother. Right. Different father. <laughs> Same, Same mother. Yep. Same mother. <laughs> Mark Mountain is concerned about a tropical storm building near Benga Lagoon. We may have only one day's diving before the ocean becomes undivable. Papa, the shark feeder, puts on his steel mesh gloves. He is confident Big Mama will turn up today. Mark Mountain begins his descent to the wall in readiness to film the bull sharks and me. David, be careful. 
of Hook and Big Mama. Okay. I take my heavy camera housing. I will heed Papa's warning and be careful, but hope the legend shark Big Mama will turn up and perform for my camera today. The water is warmer and over 30 bull sharks have come up from the 260 metre deep or 600 foot deep Benga Channel to feed. Immediately, the dominant sharks are annoyed at my invasion in the competition zone near the bait bin. Sharks come at me. Their snouts are equipped with jelly-filled pits called ampullae of Lorenzini. These pits can detect the minute electrical fields of contracting muscles in fish. My heartbeat is easily detected by these enormous sharks. A racing heartbeat may indicate weakness and stimulate a response I cannot handle. Over the years, I have learnt to slow my heart rate in dangerous situations. Only by being calm can I possibly deal with these territorial sharks. Mark returns to the boat to reload his camera. Thanks. Dominant sharks are really giving Dave heaps down there. It's really starting to be a bit worrying. Some sharks are feeding on bass above my head. I am now vulnerable to dominant sharks from above and those approaching me on the seabed. An exceptionally thick-set shark then takes the bait, but then shows her displeasure at my closeness by raising her snout and arching her back. Knowing the body language of sharks tells me she will return. Then a monster shark comes up from the depths of Benga Channel, cunningly approaching through the stirred up sand. I bump away the huge head. It is she. The legend shark has finally arrived. She vanishes. Other sharks come at me.
I bump them away. And then she returns again. She is massive, possibly the largest bull shark ever filmed. More sharks come in an attempt to expel me from their territory. With so many aggressive sharks, I've trouble deciding which one to bump off first. She returns again, but each time I stand my ground. Keeping my heart rate down is getting harder to achieve now. Now her attention is on feeding. Papa bravely drags the baits back towards my camera. Some believe this huge shark is Dakawanga, the sea god. And maybe we have been in the presence of royalty. I believe we have filmed one of nature's absolute masterpieces of evolution. And animals like these deserve our respect and protection. It's time now to celebrate our success. You're an absolute legend, mate. Okay. You're a legend. Thank you, David.